from the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. Tonight, the WRTV Storm Team is tracking the potential for two rounds of wintry weather here in central Indiana. The Department of Public Works will have 80 trucks out on the roadways beginning tonight. Starting at 11 p.m., crews will be focusing on pre-treating our streets to prepare for snow showers that could be heading our way. Thanks so much for joining us here at 6 o'clock. I'm Nicole Griffin. We want to get right over to meteorologist Kyle Mounts tonight. Kyle, when should we expect that active weather to arrive? Well, things are going to get fairly active active here, Nicole, over the next 48 hours or so in that first round moving in during the morning hours tomorrow. A little bit of a wintry mix coming our way with some light ice, possibly some light snow accumulations. And I think most of the impact from this part of the system will be south of I-70. But again, it's going to be very light out there right now. We've just noticed an increase in some of the cloud cover, but still dry. Expect our skies to remain dry here as we go through the evening. Back off to the west, there's a system. You can see some snow to the north, a little bit of precipitation here across southern Missouri, but this area is pretty pretty dry and there are some concerns looking at some of the data this afternoon. It may not fill in all that much, keeping things very minimal on the impact side and that would be great. Temperatures are going to be very important right now. We sit around 30 degrees and after a quick drop this evening to about 26, we'll come up and kind of level off there in the middle to upper 20s. Closer look at that timeline for your Sunday forecast in just a bit. Kyle, thank you. Let's get to the very latest numbers that show how COVID-19 is impacting the Hoosier state. Another 3,188 Hoosiers have been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The state health department also reported 50 more deaths. The total number now stands at 9,317. Since March, more than 608,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for COVID-19, and more than 6.7 million tests have been administered in Indiana. Loss of smell, COVID and fires, three things that pose a potential deadly threat these days is causing fire officials from Fishers to put out a warning. Sense of smell, Fishers Fire Captain John Melling says may seem like just an inconvenience to those that lost it due to COVID, but it also poses a risk when those without a sense of smell aren't able to recognize something burning, smoke or a toxic cleaning combination. It's a situation which grabbed national headlines last week after a family in Texas with loss of smell due to COVID was not aware of smoke from a fire in their home. It is reported the family did get out of the house, but the danger is still there. Melling says he wants to get the word out here in Indiana before something like this happens. You have about three minutes to get out of a house that's on fire. That's that's changed rapidly over the past 30 years in the amount of time you had to escape your home. If you don't have that smoke alarm going off and alerting you or you can't smell that smoke to get out, that three minutes is diminishing quickly and we're afraid that we're going to lose someone if we can't get them out. Melling also adds that this is personal to him. He tested positive for the virus back in December and has yet to have his sense of taste or smell return. He suggests to always be aware of your surroundings. Have a buddy with you if you do choose to mix cleaners like bleach when you are cleaning and make sure your smoke alarms are working. As the Senate prepares for former President Trump's second impeachment trial, the New York Times is reporting that Trump is being accused of discussing plans with Justice Department officials to overturn the election while he was still in office. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert tonight with the details. The date of former President Trump's second impeachment trial is now set to begin the week of February 8th, more than a month after the violent attack on Capitol Hill. We have to address that and make sure and never happens again. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will send over the article of impeachment on Monday. According to the Constitution, the Senate trial will begin at 1 p.m. the next day. Senators will still be sworn in as jurors on Tuesday, but both sides will then have two weeks to prepare. During that period, the Senate will continue to do other business for the American people, such as cabinet nominations and the COVID relief bill, which would provide relief for millions of Americans who are suffering during this pandemic. And now Trump is reportedly being accused of discussing plans with Justice Department officials to overturn the election while he was still in office. 
In a stunning report by the New York Times, citing unnamed sources, Trump allegedly discussed removing acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen in order to execute a plan to pressure Georgia officials to flip the state's presidential election results. The man who reportedly worked on the plan, lawyer Jeffrey Clark. The Times reporting Trump allegedly mulled over whether to fire the acting AG and replace him with Clark because Rosen refused Trump's request to carry out the alleged scheme. According to the Times, Trump decided against firing Rosen only after top Justice Department officials threatened mass resignations. Clark telling the Times their report contained inaccuracies and that all of his official communications were consistent with the law. Trump declined to comment, according to the report. The latest report could have an impact on the former president's upcoming impeachment trial. Both Rosen and Clark could be called as witnesses. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington, D.C. Andrew, thank you. Tonight, IMPD needs your help finding a missing 22-year-old man with autism. Police say Jesus Correa left his home on South Villa Avenue in Indianapolis sometime last night or early this morning. He's 5 feet 6 inches and weighs 145 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. IMPD says he was last seen around 11 p.m. Friday wearing a gray sweatshirt, blue jeans, and blue tennis shoes, but he did leave without his winter coat. Anyone who sees him or knows where he is tonight should call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. He could have been who he is now or just some random John Doe off the street doing it. Um, that room still would have been just as bright. Hoosier hospitality, and there is no story better than this one here as an example of it. It all happened Friday starting in Carmel. Colts linebacker Darius Leonard tweeted that a security guard at the Carmel BMV handed him cash to pay for his lunch as he was walking out as a complete act of kindness. Leonard added that the man did not know who he was because he had on a mask, hat, and a hoodie. Later on that day, the linebacker continued paying it forward by picking up the tab for everyone at this Eagle Creek Cracker Barrel. Roommates David Mills and Eric Reitz were at the restaurant when this all happened and agreed it was a shock when the waitress told them that Darius Leonard paid for their meal. Reitz says he wanted to show the world what his favorite player did for him and others, so that is why he posted it on Instagram, only to have it commented on by Leonard and then reposted by the Colts. I know, I know they always say that don't meet your heroes, but I was, I was just so happy that I got to be validated in that my hero on the Colts turns out to be an actual hero. Like that, that, that that's great that he cares, you know, enough about his community, um, you know, to pay it forward. That's really nice to see something like that happening, especially after you know uh, a year like 2020 uh, and a lot of things going on in, in different aspects of the world, and um, and you see something like this where it's just a um, uh, just a small gesture of uh, uh, just an act of random act of kindness, and it's uh, you know praise God is is nice to see after after a year like 2020. The roommates from Brownsburg went back to the same Cracker Barrel for lunch today, and you may have guessed it. They decided to continue the chain of kindness by paying it forward. They told us they bought lunch for the couple behind them. WRTV also reached out to the Colts organization to see if Leonard got in contact with the security guard. He tweeted Friday he wanted to buy him dinner and bring him to a game, but we are still waiting to hear back. What a great story. He interviewed presidents, Hollywood royalty, and everyday people. We have reaction tonight to the passing of legendary TV personnel, personality Larry King. We'll have that coming up still ahead on the News at 6. Your doctor about Entresto. Tonight, we remember broadcasting legend Larry King, who passed away earlier today at the age of 87. The television and radio host conducted about 50,000 interviews during his career, and he's being remembered by his colleagues and many of the newsmakers he interviewed over the years. Here's ABC's Alex Perche with a look at Larry King's career. Tributes pouring in on social media from broadcasting legend Larry King following the news of his death. Christy Alley writing, one of the only talk show hosts who let you talk, his colleagues remembering him as well. CNN's Jim Acosta tweeting, he will be missed by so many CNN employees past and present. Wearing his trademark suspenders, Larry King became a fixture on CNN back in 1985. This is the premier edition of Larry King Live. Becoming the reigning king of the television interview. Interviewing world leaders. First, you still like this job? Oh, I, I, the, the, this is uh, the best job on earth. I mean, it's uh, 
It's an extraordinary privilege to celebrities and you. countless others. An estimated 50,000 interviews during his entire career. Signing off for the last time in 2010 after 25 years on CNN. Uh, good evening and welcome to the last Larry King Live. Born in Brooklyn in 1933, King set the Guinness World Record for the longest running show in the same time slot on the same network. New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo writing on Twitter, Larry King was a Brooklyn boy who became a newsman who interviewed the newsmakers. Married eight times to seven women, his final and longest marriage to Sean King. Over the years, King battled a number of health issues, including a heart attack, lung and prostate cancer, and a near-fatal stroke that left him in a coma for two weeks in 2019. His family says he was hospitalized after Christmas and passed away Saturday at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. And I'd like to be remembered as someone who greatly contributed to the profession he chose to be in. And if he made it a drop better by his being there. Larry King was 87. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Alex, thank you. Well, have you ever gotten a package you did not order? It could be part of a scam. The Federal Trade Commission and cyber experts have been warning consumers about deliveries being known as brushing scams. Here's how they work. Third-party sellers on Amazon, eBay, and other online marketplaces pay people to write fake, positive reviews about their products. To be able to post the reviews, these so-called brushers need to trick the site into making it appear a legitimate transaction took place. So they'll use a fake account to place orders and address them to a random person whose name and address they find online. Then, instead of actually mailing the item for which they want to post a review, the brushers will send a cheap, often lightweight item that costs less to ship. The FTC has gone after marketers that use fake reviews, but it's not illegal to send customers unordered merchandise. United Airlines may require all workers to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The airline CEO reportedly told employees they should expect it, it to be a mandate, but he said that other companies also have to get on board with mandatory vaccines. Airlines and their unions have lobbied to get their essential employees early on the vaccine distribution list. Hand sanitizer is, of course, a good way to protect yourself against germs, but it may also present a hidden danger. Researchers in France discovered a large uptick in the number of eye injuries caused by these sanitizers. Seven times more instances were reported between April and August of last year than the same period in the previous year. 16 of those cases required hospitalizations as opposed to just one case in 2019. All of those admissions were in children under four years old and two did require surgery. While it is not known for sure how the injuries happened, the researchers have a theory. All those hand sanitizer stations you see out in public places are positioned at hand level, which is also eye level for many children. Something to be aware of tonight, Kyle. Yes, it is. And we had a lot of sunshine today. That was nice as we had the colder air in place for us. We started off at 13 degrees this morning and we'll see those temperatures a little more manageable going into tomorrow. But Greencastle, good evening to you. You can start to see those clouds rolling in, but not before a beautiful sunset out there. Our temperature 29 degrees in Indy and Kokomo 32 in the Shelbyville area. Area. Now, winds are pretty light, but they're out of the east and southeast, so that's going to keep those temperatures up a little bit here as we go through the evening and looking at a low of just 26 degrees, so we're not going to fall very far. In fact, I think as we go toward tomorrow morning, those numbers come up a degree or two, so we'll be in the upper 20s to start off your Sunday. The clouds will continue to increase for us, but we're not expecting precipitation during the overnight. As we get to 5 o'clock on Sunday morning, Truecast, you see a little bit of light blue here. I think there's there's not going to be a lot of this reaching the ground. Maybe a few flurries at that point. We go to 730 in the morning and we start to see a little more blue showing up here, especially near Terre Haute, Sullivan and through Greene County and also around Bloomington. That's really where the focus is here as we go through mid to late morning hours. You can see around uh, Bedford and Seymour, Greensburg, Columbus along I-65 there. Could be a little bit slick here as we go through the first half of the day. We get closer to Indianapolis, areas to the north, very scattered, light snow shower activity, maybe a period of some very light freezing rain. We go into the afternoon, 
Precipitation's out of here, but it is going to be a gray day for us. May see a few flurries. So ice accumulation, very light, maybe a hundredth of an inch or so. Again, mainly south of I-70, but we know it takes very little ice to cause us some problems. So just be aware of that, especially on untreated surfaces tomorrow morning. On the flip side of that, any snow accumulation, that's also going to be very light. I think one inch would be very isolated as we go through the second half of the weekend. Temperatures, they start off upper 20s. We will climb into the upper 30s tomorrow afternoon and then as we go into the day on Monday more potent system will slide our way more widespread with the precipitation here could see a little more ice and freezing rain along I-70 some snow to the north and some heavier rain as we get into the afternoon seven day planning forecast those temperatures are going to hold in the 30s for highs things quiet down the second half of the week and we'll warm it up 44 next weekend they're calling it the Fieldhouse of the Future. We're getting a look at a lot of what's new inside Bankers Life Fieldhouse. I'm Brad Brown. We'll take the tour for you coming up here on WRTV. For just $199 a month. On Sunday, the Pacers will be welcoming fans back inside Bankers Life Fieldhouse. But how do you make a great place to watch basketball even better? The Pacers have started to make that happen, and our Brad Brown got an inside look at what's new. For a building that's now more than 20 years old, Bankers Life Fieldhouse is still looking like it's brand new. This building has a great understructure. It's going to be here for a long time and another generation. The first phase of a three-year construction and renovation program has been completed. Nine months of work have led to some brand new spaces and some major upgrades to others. We're excited for all of it. It's a beautiful building. It's the best building to watch a game, basketball game in the country, probably in the world, and we're making it even better. We're excited for people to get to see it. Construction inside has been what they call a bottom-up plan, with the premium spaces on the event level getting started. But for fans walking inside the field house, they will get a strong visual of what's been done here from the moment they walk in. The massive center court video board is all new, with bigger, brighter screens and more visuals from every seat of the field house. Speaking of seats, those are being upgraded as well. The original green chairs replaced by new, more comfortable gray ones. The lower bowl is complete. Those will eventually make their way to the upper levels. It was a matter of trying to get the populace and the other architects who are working on it to say, hey, what can we do that's financially feasible and make it look like it's totally different? And so with the work that was done for the months and months and months before we started construction was really the opportunity for us to make sure that we did it right. The biggest changes are coming mostly out of sight of the Arena Bowl. The lower level suites have all gotten an upgrade. New TVs, new chairs, and a more premium atmosphere. There's also the addition of two new club spaces. The 67 Club plays homage to the Pacers' beginnings and the Hardwood Club to the state's rich basketball history. Fans sitting in the lower levels will have access. We know that each person coming in here sort of has a, a unique hope for that game. Some it's really centered on if we win or lose. Some is just, you know, hanging out with friends. I think our goal has really been to create that experience that appeals to each person individually while still having sort of a shared experience overall. The Fieldhouse practice court got a vertical adjustment. A move to street level opened up more than 7,000 square feet of space underneath. That's now home to the locker room and training facilities for the Fever, making it among the best in the WNBA. It's all the little things that make us, that will make us into that championship type team. So we're excited. Got a lot of work ahead of us, but it starts right here. We're trying to create an environment where championships are the norm. So we're in that process. This is a big piece of that, to have the ability to provide for our players every resource they need to be at their best, to learn and to grow. There are changes being made as fans come back to the field house while COVID-19 remains an issue. Signs for social distancing, a cashless payment and debit system. Tickets will go digital as well. The field house of the future? It'll feel like that from the moment you walk in. This really forces businesses to, I think, to adapt. And a lot of times we're more cautious and fearful of how our fans are going to respond than how they actually do. And sometimes we need a, a gentle little nudge. And, and certainly this pandemic was more than just a gentle little nudge. The next phase of construction will begin and continue this spring. Working for you, Brad Brown, WRTV Sports. Is delivered. 
If you wanted an excuse to try a new restaurant in Indianapolis, feast on this Devour Indie Winterfest starts tomorrow and runs through February 6th. More than 100 restaurants across the city are offering three course value priced menus, including Brew Burger Bar, St. Elmo Steakhouse, Capitol Grill, and the Jazz Kitchen, just to name a few. You can find a full list of participating locations in this story on the WRTV News app or at WRTV.com. After 37 drawings, there's finally a Mega Millions jackpot winner. One ticket in Michigan matched all six numbers drawn on Friday for the $1 billion jackpot. The cash option is $739 million before taxes. The winning numbers were 4, 26, 42, 50, 60, and a mega ball number of 24. The odds of winning it all, Kyle, were 1 in 302 million. Someone is very lucky out there. I was somewhere in that 302 million. <laughs> of course, I didn't buy a ticket either. That'll do it. All right, a little bit of a wintry mix going into tomorrow morning. Kyle, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tonight at 11. Have a great night.